It only took until week six to talk about perfection. That's not bad. Welcome to Fantasy Baseball today, brought to you by Captain Morgan. We're glad you're with us. We're I'm perfection. Lauren Shahadi. Exactly. I was going to say, we talk mm. about you every week, and you're actually <laughs> perfection. My co host to my right, Eric Mack, Fantasy Baseball columnist, Arrestus Destrade. Buenas. Buenas. And Dallas Braden. Let's add him to the bunch because he is perfect. And quite a nice story to go along what with. What an incredible story. Dallas Braden goes out and challenges Alex Rodriguez for stepping on his mound. And then he says, in the 209, we settle things with knuckles, not war of words. And then he goes out on Mother's Day and throws a perfect game. His mother died of cancer when he was a senior in high school. He was taken care of by his grandmother, who was in attendance on Sunday. And he pitches a perfect game. And then the grandmother says, stick it, A-Rod. It's an amazing story. Dallas Braden is a must-start in all fantasy leagues right now. You have to pick him up. It's not just because of that war of words with A-Rod. He was pitching pretty well. And then in fantasy week six, he pitches at the LA Angels. They're struggling. Dallas Braden is hot. Start him in all leagues right I now. I love his story and I love his picture. I am Nobody is messing <laughs> yeah. with that guy, right? Chin up. Oh, what do you think about him? We know you liked his performance, but in the long term. I mean, in the long term, and you got to you know put this in, in perspective, obviously, because uh, you know we saw what Mark Burley did last year after the perfect game. He actually kind of struggled. It hasn't really ever come back to, to anywhere near that. Uh, I, I expect that Dallas Braden, a young kid, uh, is going to level off and he's going to be fine. But live this high. There's no doubt. And definitely in the, in the fantasy baseball owner world, World, you know, play him out because I think he's going to be, and he is the type of guy in that big spacious stadium that always pushes pretty well anyway because he's the type of guy that doesn't give up a lot of home runs. He's a sinker ball type of guy. And, and, and I keep on coming back to the Tampa Bay Rays, and I've mentioned it here before earlier in the season. You got to start paying attention to the fact that they struggle with quality lefties, especially lefties that can hit the corners. If you think Mark Burley last year, uh, perfect game, him, almost got no hit by CC Sabathia the first time they saw CC at Tropicana Field. He went into the ninth with a no hitter. So, you know, this is a team that does have some problems against left handed pitching. And Dallas Braden was a decent prospect. He struggled with some injuries, had his Tommy John surgery. He's a tough guy, an intense competitor. I like him. I think you can start him in all fantasy leagues. He was available in 29% of leagues wow. when he was pitching that game uh, on Sunday. And now he's probably not available in your league. But if it's uh, if you can still pick him up, pick him up and start him. Dallas Braden is a buy. And he is having his time. That's right. Joe Maurer, it is time for him. You know there's a lot to talk about when we don't start off the show with Joe Maurer. Got to get excited that he's back. I, I'm, I'm very excited that he's back. I mean, and, and remember, we talked about it. And Emac uh, mentioned last week that, that kind of uh, the decision that the manager guard hire not to DL him to keep him kind of in this limbo, well, here he comes. And because of the fact that he was not DL, here comes, you know, uh, what I call not your average Joe Maurer, because he's not your average Joe, uh, back in the lineup. And there's nothing like Joe Maurer back in this lineup, not only in the lineup, remember, but also behind the plate catching the what he means to the team as a captain as a leader what he means to that community he is uh, one of the most all-around players in the major leagues if yeah. not if not the all-around player yeah he's a guy you have to start in fantasy I know they only have five games this week um, but the days off help Monday and Thursday he's gonna probably play those two games Tuesday and Wednesday and then probably two games over the weekend so Joe Maurer you should get him back in your lineup even if he only plays four of those five games or maybe three of the five games the value over a replacement player is high Joe Maurer should be active in your lineup maybe if he only plays three games. What if he plays only one or two? I'm speaking for the fantasy owner right. out there that's saying one or two games with Maurer against four or five with a second tier catcher. Well, in Roto Leagues, you know, that week doesn't matter as much. It's more about the whole season and you want Joe Maurer in your lineup as much as possible in those cases. But in head-to-head -head leagues where that one week means a big tally on your win-loss record for the season, you probably can sit Joe Maurer in head-to-head -head leagues. I just run him out there in Roto Leagues. Last week, though, we, get, we had pretty good information that he wasn't going to play in those uh, first three games of the week and then he was going to be a little sketchy over the weekend so we had good information that you could have sat him in roto leagues but i think in roto leagues if he's not on the dl he's in your lineup head-to-head -head leagues you gotta you gotta weigh the number of games he's playing it's pretty important that one week it matters more in head-to-head -head. we want big things from not your average joe as arrestus would say you know you called this earlier on uh ian kinsler you said he could be as good as chase utley yeah but he was injured, so yeah. you know you didn't get the numbers that you, that you, you missed wanted about a month, month of Ian Kinsler, right. and now he's back and he's hot. 
I think Ian Kinsler, in his prime at age 27, he's a guy that can challenge Chase Utley at the top of the second base rankings. I know uh, Robinson Cano has gotten off to a great start, and a lot of people are talking about him being up there with Utley, but I think it's Kinsler with that speed and power. There was a, a dip in his batting average last year, but I'm seeing Ian Kinsler with his strikeout-to-walk ratio as more of a 300 hitter. He's in a great lineup in Texas, a great hitter's park. In the summer months, Ian Kinsler is going to be a monster. Uh, if, you, if you can buy low on Kinsler right now, try to do it. And, and one, a couple more things I'm going to add real quick on Ian Kinsler because I've had a chance to spend some time with him, and I've interviewed him a few times. Uh, he's a wonderful kid. you got to watch out a little bit in the second half. Believe it or not, he's the type of guy that, 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 that really, you know, guns it in the first half, and he's had, and he's talked about that, and he's talked to me about the fact that i got to stay strong for the second half. Yeah. But another interesting thing, he's so good that he actually, back in ASU days, played in front of uh, the MVP from a couple years ago, Dustin Perdura. They were both on the same team, remember? Yeah. And, uh, and he outplayed Dustin. Uh, you know, so this, this is a talented, talented young second base. You guys are pretty excited about him. Are you excited about Manny Ramirez? We're excited he's healthy, right? Yeah. Couple that's, games. And that's the, the important thing. You saw a couple games at him. You didn't get the production you wanted, but you didn't have him in your lineup anyway. It's probably a best case scenario. He proves healthy, and now you get him back in your lineup for Fantasy Week 6. Manny Ramirez should probably be starting in all fantasy leagues. Don't worry about the production over the weekend. His production will pick up. Manny Ramirez is just too promising to sit. We talked about a couple guys that were coming back from injury. What about a couple guys that are still dealing with injuries? Let's start with guys that could be safe. Uh, yeah, Charlie Tulowitzki had a little quad problem on uh, Sunday. They pulled him out of the game. He's an interesting case. Of these guys that I say are safe to start, Tulowitzki is the biggest question mark. He's the one that's most owned of all these guys. Tulowitzki, though, his team has seven games, so even if he misses a couple of games early in the week, like Joe Maurer, his value over a replacement player is pretty high because he plays that thin position of shortstop. So all these guys, I would start I would start Troy Tulowitzki even if he misses a few games. I know his power isn't there. He only has one homer, and there's shortstoppers, shortstops like Alex Gonzalez that have ten homers. But Tulowitzki's going to get hot. You want him in your lineup every week if you can. If he's not on the DL, he's not going there, it looks like. So start Tru Troy Tulowitzki if he, even if he misses a couple of those seven games they have on the schedule. And what about guys that aren't so safe to start, that are still dealing with injuries? Right. This one at the top of the list, Nelson Cruz, it looked like we could have him back early this week week, um, but Nelson Cruz had a little setback with his hamstring. He's going to be moved back to Thursday. I probably won't start him except in a deep ale only uh, rotisserie league where, like I said it before, the one week doesn't matter as much as the big picture. Nelson Cruz, you probably sit. And then these injured pitchers, Andy Pettit, uh, Jared Jurgens, and Justin Dukeshire. I am not sure who, which of these guys are going to start. In fact, Pettit and Jurgens can both be skipped off their uh, projected weekend returns. So it's not necessary that they can uh, they have to pitch this weekend. Justin Dukeshire does have to pitch because they need a fifth starter on Saturday. You might take a chance on Dukeshire, but uh, Pettit and Jurgens, I would leave on your bench. So listen up, guys. I'm going to pull an audible. And I'm going nice. to tell you why. Because we usually talk about bold predictions a little bit later in the show. I know avid fantasy awesome. baseball today watchers are saying, Lauren, you know, you're you're, you're – Getting ahead of yourself, there's bragging going on <laughs> right, to my right. right. I don't know what but you're talking about. Go to CBSSports.com. When we're good and we're, we're, we're really good, take a look. Mark so Teixeira, <laughs> a text message to Mark Teixeira, as the great John Sterling would say. He's going to hit in one of the games this week, not one, not two, but three home runs in a game because it's May, and he already yeah. went to Fantasy Baseball Island, and he knows it's May. Oh, my goodness. That's why <laughs> oh, you get paid the big bucks. <laughs> I tell you what, you know, you know, here's the deal with this, you know, there's more than one, you know, extra sensory perception network out there in the world. In fact, uh, in fact, CBS is one of them. If you think about it, in fact, this is a little known fact that the, the acronym for CBS is clairvoyant ball game sensory. Really, that's what CBS stands for. And uh, a lot of people don't know that, but I know that. And now that I'm with CBS, I can continue some of my clairvoyancy because of that. But uh, all kidding aside, the really the uncanny thing is not that I kind of, you know, predicted that he was going to hit three home runs in, in the, this week because he does. It's how hot this guy turns on when May 1st comes on. Yeah. I mean, the jumbo jet that is his season gets turned on May 1st. It's uncanny. When he's in April, all his whole career, eight, nine years, he averages 240 or sub bit below that as, a, as, a, as an April hitter. If you look at his stats, when Meg One comes uh, for Mark Teixeira, it's you know smooth sailing. He puts it on autopilot. You can MVP type season. Why? You know, he can't figure it out, but the reality is that, that May, you play him. And, and that's, you know, this is an interesting thing because the smart fantasy owners out there that really have studied this and know this, 
You sit Mark Teixeira in April. You sit yeah. him all month, especially in the Roto. Yeah. You sit him all month long. Then all of a sudden, May 1st comes, you go, bing! You play him the rest of the it's season. It's amazing. After after May 1, he's basically Albert Pujols the rest of the wow. season. Wow. It's, it's really, look at the stats. It's uncanny. And really. after that game, the email chain that was going on from our producers to everyone, no way, <laughs> no oh, way. was right. Oh, pulled but, you that know, one. stop getting so high on yourself because I have a bone to pick with what? both of you. What, what First happened? of all, Emac, yeah. we're going to talk about me? PV. Oh, yeah. When we're right, we're right. When we're wrong, one. we're wrong. Yeah, Jake PV, we said sit him in that two start. He was just going so awfully. And I did say, though, sit him and hope he does this because now he is the ace again. You can start in Fantasy Week 6. He is at Kansas City. He's a must start. I know I got it wrong last week and it cost so many people that were uh, sitting him last week. But Jake PV, at least you've seen the best of him now. You can trust him in a uh, mixed fantasy league and you get him back in your lineup. So there's a silver lining to my I being wrong. I see. All right. And you're not off the hook over there, <laughs> no, I wasn't. Mr. Ricky. I think because I, 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 well, you know, the only <laughs> thing that I'm off the hook is world. that he did go to Fantasy Baseball Island. And the people that have come out of Fantasy Baseball Island have all come out healthier, better, are living better lives. And he definitely. We're living a better life after coming out hitting 393. Uh, one of the big things with him, and I'll still say it, and then all kidding aside again, he has to be more consistent because this kid, you see it. So it's hard for a baseball, uh, fantasy baseball owner to decide how you're playing Ricky Weeks because one week he'll hit 400 and the week, next week he'll hit 100. Very frustrating kind of player for a fantasy owner. Yeah, streaky young player. He's 27. Had he had maybe a, a 500 at bat season, yeah. some of those streaks would smooth out. Injured a lot. Yeah. Some of those streaks would smooth out. When you, uh, streaky young players tend point. to become great MVP candidates later in their career. But without the at-bats, Ricky Weeks wasn't able to smooth out um, his hot and cold streaks. And then going back to the predictions, yes. I said Joe Maurer would go back on the DL, and I was completely wrong. No, no. I think you said something about the Twins were going to win without Joe Maurer. They, they won some games. They won, back, they won like 500. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, we're going to be right with everything I was we not say right. from this point on. We can guarantee you that. We're just getting started here on Fantasy Baseball today. You know what? If you want to ask us some questions, participate in the chat to my left, and we'll answer your questions after this. Stick around.